Greetings, greetings, and welcome to another special edition of Curl Inspires on my YouTube channel. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Today, I wanted to do a video on something that really resonated with me as I was thinking about how I can provide value to those of you who are looking to create an interview podcast or looking to further develop your interview podcast in a successful way. And I just thought about it and I was just like, man, I realize that there are a lot of people that have this idea of creating a podcast, but they just can't get it off the ground for whatever reason. So I wanted to explore some of the top reasons why people get stuck at starting an interview podcast or even just a podcast in general. And I really wanted to break down these top reasons and try to give you guys some insight on what you can do to avoid getting stuck from these top four issues, all right? So I say four because I came up with about four major reasons why people get stuck and they don't start their interview podcast. Now, this doesn't encompass every reason, but it's definitely some of the most common reasons why people just don't launch their podcast. So let's jump right into it. I also want to let y'all know that real quickly, I know I've been mentioning this in some of the previous videos. I just recently set up the structure for me to do one-on-one -on -one consultations or coaching with individuals out there like yourself who may be interested in getting some extra support. Like what I do with these videos is awesome because I'm able to really just walk you through on a usual basis about things that you can utilize to benefit your podcast, your interview podcast to be exact. But I know that there are people out there that may need that one-on-one -on -one time to get the support so that they can achieve their goals that they have in mind for their interview podcast. And I want to be able to make myself available in that way to support you. So in the this video's description, I have a link where you can actually schedule an appointment with me, a, a virtual video appointment with me, where I can literally listen to what some of your challenges are and give you advice on the next best steps to support you on your goals with interview podcasting, right? This is called a discovery session that you can book with me on uh, at the link within the description of this video. So I just wanted to say that off the bat that I'm now available and my schedule is pretty flexible within this month of December. I have availability all the way up to about seven o'clock in the evening. And if you need to do it later than that, let me know as well. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm open. I want to support y'all. I know how difficult this journey could be at times. I've been doing this for 13 years. And the interesting thing about me is that, and I'm going to do a video on this a little later on, but I do want to say like, I'm one of the examples of someone who did it by himself, right? Of course, I had the support of my family and the support of the creator and just, you know, just love that I've gotten in the world. But in terms of building up an interview podcast, starting Out The Box TV, a lot of that I did on my own. Big ups to my brother, A-Level, who's worked with me on the the out the box tv and out the box talks as well but what i mean is like i never had a corporate sponsor i never 
got interviews as a result of working for a company that a lot of these artists that I interviewed were was already familiar with, right? Like a lot of these interviews, the majority of my interviews, if not all of my interviews, have been interviews that I figured out on my own, right? Without any corporate backing. Of course, I had people that looked out, networks, but it was all me doing the networking, all right? So that's another reason why I feel like I'm qualified to support you on your podcast journey, because I recognize that there's so many people out there that are just starting out and a lot of them are like me you know a lot of them don't have any company backing them right they're doing this from the comfort of their own homes and they're doing it because they have a passion for the subject that they're going to be discussing in their shows so i know what it's like to come from pretty much no podcast background to developing it. Another thing about me, though, in terms of accolades, I will say is that I do have a radio degree. I have a college radio degree. So I've been doing this since early 2000s. OK, so, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say that before I jump into the main topic today. So the main topic today, as I said, is why are you stuck? at starting your interview podcast. So here are the four reasons why people usually get stuck at starting their interview podcast. Number one, probably one of the most popular reasons is that you have this grand idea of how you want your podcast to look and you're waiting for perfection. Let me tell you, I know what you're dealing with. I dealt with it before, but I learned that a lot of times perfection holds you back from progress. It holds you back from action. Okay. And I know you probably want your podcast to look so amazing, right? You know, you probably want to start it off with a music bed. You know, you want to have a nice outro. You want to do visuals and have a nice overlay for your visuals if it's a visual podcast. You got so much that you want to do, right? And I'm going to just say straight up, you can do those things, but do not let those things hinder you from starting. Another reason why... It's not a good idea to try to be a perfectionist when you're starting your podcast is because there are so many podcasts out there today that every day there's a new podcast being created and you're competing with that. Okay. So don't think for a second that because your podcast starts off in this grand high quality you know you got the music bed for the intro you got you know the sound effects and all of the stuff that you envision it to be don't think for a second that that is going to be all you need to develop a successful interview podcast and for people to even gather who you are or find your podcast and talk about you and for it to become known. That is not it. It can help. But what I'm saying to you is get it started without being a perfectionist. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take your time and plan, but don't let this grand idea of putting it out be the reason that stops you from putting it out, okay? If you look at my show, I don't even have, I wanna say last year, this year was the first year I started putting a music bed as my intro. And for those that don't know what a music bed is, just an instrumental, sort of like your intro instrumental, right? This is the first year I did that. But prior to this year, and if you just look back at all of the stuff I've done with Out The Box TV, my other YouTube channel, since 2009, I have no intros. 
right? And I've amassed about 3,000 subscribers on that platform. Of course, I could have had a lot more subscribers, but I took a break, you know, which I think really threw me off. But what I'm saying is I got a lot of recognition on like popular music blogs. I got a chance to interview some really big names in hip hop and soul music. And my podcast was definitely talked about across the world. So what I'm saying to you is you don't have to have all of that to start. Okay. If you're having a hard time figuring that out, just start your podcast. Now, another reason why it's not really good to try to be a perfectionist when starting your podcast is because you this is a learning experience right your first show is not going to knock the ball out the park when it comes to your professionalism or your ability to execute interviews especially if you haven't been doing it before so you want to prepare, but you're going to make mistakes. It's just a part of the process, right? Don't knock yourself if you don't make mistakes. I still make mistakes to this day, right? Making mistakes does not equate to you not being a master at your craft, okay? It's improving over time and utilizing your knowledge that you gained and implementing it in a way that will make you look more professional. But even in the midst of being professional, you're liable to make some mistakes. It's more so how much better have you gotten overall is the way you want to look at it, right? How much lesser mistakes are you making than you used to make before? That's the way you want to look at it, okay? So another thing I want to say is another reason why people get stuck at starting an interview podcast is because they're not confident that they can do a good interview. And that goes back to the point I was just saying a little while ago was you're not going to be the best interviewer if this is your first interview that you're doing. But what you can do to put yourself in a position where you can have a good interview is to prepare, right? And that's as simple as writing down your questions ahead of time, okay? Your first interview also does not have to be an hour-long interview. It could be a 20-minute interview, okay? And sometimes it's even more beneficial to shorten it because today, people's attention spans are very, very low, okay? So the shorter your interview, the more likely they, one, listen to it, and also the more likely they listen completely through it. Now, a lot of my interviews are pretty long. They're often over an hour long, you know, but it's because of the nature of the type of interviews that I do, and it's just my style. I'm telling you, if you're starting out, you don't have to do that. And the reason why I'm saying you don't have to do that is because if you're stuck at creating questions, you can just do a five question interview. A lot of my interviews be like 20 questions, right? I'm not saying that you need to do that, but you can literally do a five question interview. And the first question could be something like your intro. And I talk about this in my book, creating a successful interview podcast, which I have the link to, which is available as an ebook on Amazon. So you start with your intro and the three questions in between, you want to create questions that you think would be most intriguing to the listener. You could also throw in, in those three questions and one of those three questions, what is something you truly want to hear, right? What is something that truly resonates with you that you would like to know? And then the fifth one could just be you concluding the interview, right? So what would be an appropriate question to conclude the interview? Here's some examples. Hey, it was a wonderful time talking with you today. What is next for you? That's a good closer question. As cliche as it is, it still sets the tone for 
a closeout of the interview, right? Because you want the interview to transition smoothly as a closeout. You can also ask the question about legacy, right? Like, what do you want your legacy to be? That's another potential closeout question. Whatever your closeout question is, as long as it's something that is that feels like you're wrapping up the interview, then I think you're going to be in a good space with choosing your closeout question. But use that blueprint. Five questions. Now, here's what's cool about doing five questions, right? Just because you prepare five questions doesn't mean that that's going to be all the questions you ask. Because as I talk about in my book, if you listen intentionally to the responses of the questions you ask, it will pr provide the opportunity for you to now create new questions based on the responses that you're getting from the guests, right? So if your guest says something that you find really interesting and it pops up another question in your mind, you can follow up with that question right before you go to your next scripted question, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind when you're preparing your questions, okay? The other reason why people get stuck at creating and starting their interview podcast is that they don't know who they should interview first, okay? I also talk about how to get your first interview in the book and i did a video detailing some guides around that but what i will say in regards to getting your first interview is try your best not to overthink who you want to interview but use this guy let's just say i'll just say straight up it's going to be challenging to get a huge name or a popular name for your first interview unless you already have a relationship with that popular guest right so let's say your podcast is about soccer right and you wanted to interview one of the star soccer players you might have a hard time getting that person but you might not have such a hard time getting a trainer right that is kind of under the radar, you know, that is involved with training soccer players, right? But even if you find yourself being, if you find it being a little difficult to get the trainer because this is your first show, right? Trainer might be a little hesitant to give you that interview because you don't really have a track record of your interview podcast or show. You can start with someone who's a friend of yours someone who is also a social media follower of yours if you're on social media and you're already talking about the subject of soccer this is just an example right i'm just using soccer as an example so it could be someone that already has some sort of relationship with you they might be a peer of yours you know where they're kind of on the same level and they share the same interests and they they have the knowledge that they can speak on the subject as an expertise. It could also be a friend that you grew up with that you and this person always talked about soccer, right? Like I said, I'm just using soccer as an example. Or it could just, it could be anyone. It could be a past coworker that you still have a good relationship. As long as you and this individual share common knowledge on the subject, this is a worthy person that you can start your first podcast with. I don't want you to overthink it because what's most important is the value that the two of you bring to the conversation. And I'll even say the value that the actual guest brings to the conversation because that's the person you're gonna be interviewing. So don't overthink it. Think about who you already know that has knowledge enough to speak like they're an expert about the subject and that could be someone as simple as a friend okay or someone that you know you've had a relationship with and let that be your first show okay 
and 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 I said this in one of the previous videos, but think and you could go back to that video to to get more details on getting your first guest interview. But when you do get that first guest confirmed, whether it's a friend, former colleague, or some other expert, you know what you want to think about is because this is your first show where you're doing the interview. You probably want to think about a topic, and you don't have to stick to this topic, but you probably want to think about a topic that still kind of introduces people to what the show is going to be about. So if you and this person have an interest in soccer, then you guys could talk about as a topic for the show what you guys love about soccer, right? And what uh, and what were some of your experiences with soccer and what made you all excited to have a conversation about this on the platform? right and i mean being that you're interviewing the guests obviously you as the host would be asking the guests these questions right you'll be saying to the guests things like man thank you so much for joining my interview show this is my first show i know you have so much value to offer because just like me you're a big fan of soccer right and then you could talk about what inspired them to get involved with soccer right and how long they've been a fan of it, how much they've participated in it in them themselves. So it's a nice kind of like opener show that is introducing the fans to the passion for the sport and the involvement in the sport. Excuse me. So that's another thing I want to mention. Now, the last thing I want to mention in regards to why people find it really difficult or they're stuck at starting their interview podcast is they don't know what podcast platform to use. And although this may seem like something that is not a big deal, it could be one of the common reasons why people get stuck. Okay. So let me just say off the bat, you can do some research out there and see what podcast platform to use. But before I even offer platforms, I want you to know that a podcast is not necessarily defined by the platform that you use. Okay. You can use any platform that allows you to speak with a guest and share it to the world online and you could pretty much consider that a podcast okay so i want to say that before i offer some options so keeping that in mind you could launch your podcast solely on youtube right but technically a podcast is usually an audio based show that involves a main host or a series of hosts doing a show talking about a specific set of topics, or it's an interview show where you have one main host interviewing guests or multiple hosts interviewing guests. All right. So you can do a podcast on YouTube, but if you are going the traditional audio podcast route, then you can go with an app called anchor.fm that will allow you to not only upload your podcast for free, you also will get your podcast distributed to a number of the sh digital streaming platforms that usually host podcasts. So I'm talking about when you sign up with anchor.fm for your podcast for free, you're able to get on Spotify, you're able to get on Apple Podcasts, you're able to get on Overcast, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, all of these different podcast platforms for free. So the beautiful thing about Anchor is that when you upload your podcast to Anchor, it just pushes your podcast to all those other platforms. And I'm mentioning Anchor is because I, I have utilized Anchor for a long time since I relaunched out the box talks as a podcast, I've mainly used anchor.fm and I've had a lot of success with it. So it's a free option. 
I don't think you could go wrong with it being a free option. Now, if you want to go the paid option, there may be some other perks that you can benefit from in the paid option. There's a site called podbean.com, which I've used in the past. I no longer use them right now, but they were they were a successful platform to use. And they have a paid option. Uh, let me go to their website right now. Actually, they have a basic option, which is free. And I think they give you about five hours in storage. But if you go with the $9 a month option, which is, I guess if you do $9 a month, it's billed annually. But if you really just want to do monthly, you know, literally every month you pay, I think it's about 14 dollars a month that gives you unlimited storage unmetered bandwidth um they have like the iphone android app embeddable players your own podcast site that might be something that you're interested in rss feed and itunes support beautiful beautiful podcast themes yeah, well, there's some things that you don't get, but you'll see. All right. The beautiful podcast themes are the pro themes on the popular unlimited audio plan, the $14 a month plan. So, yeah, you can go to their website, podbean.com, if you are interested in what they have to offer for their prices. Their prices seem to be pretty reasonable as well. So those are the two platforms that I've used before for podcasting. Like I said, I use Anchor now and I have no problem with it. And uh, I think if you're just getting started and you kind of want to try things out, hey, you could do the free op the basic option, which is pretty much zero dollars and free on uh, Podbean. Or you could just try Anchor, whichever one works for you, then you have you have the full decision to do whatever you would like, right? To pick which one of you would like. So yeah, I hope that this video was inspiring to you. I hope you learned something new. Definitely shout me out in the comments, send me an email if you would like. Uh, my email is krillinspires at gmail.com. So I'm gonna put up, uh, I'll put my email in the description of the video. And yeah, you could uh, definitely reach out to me. Like I said, I have coaching services set up now. I'm officially ready to support you on your journey. So if you would like to book a discovery session with me, uh, I would love to support you. Uh, this, this session, what it does is it allows me to get an understanding of what your challenge is with regards to starting your interview podcast, or maybe you already started it and you're stuck in a certain area and you need support. I just want to know what it is you're, you're struggling with. And then what I'll do is give you a suggestion that I think you should take for the best course of action so that you can achieve the success that you're looking for. All right. So listen, I'm available. I'm here to support you. I am with you. I'm with you. I, I've, I've been there. I've done this before. You know, and I'm the type of person that will give you my all. I will give you the full amount of time that you need to try to work with you through achieving your goals. All right. So let me know. The description is in the link of this video if you would like to book a discovery session with me so that I can support you and help you to get to where you need to go in terms of achieving your interview podcast success. All right. Till the next time, I just want to say peace, love, and light. I'm going to be doing more videos. You know, as you can see, I don't have my big setup. I, you know, and I had to think about that. I was like, man, you know, it takes me a little while sometimes to set things up. And I feel like I'm not being as present as I need to be for you, for you all that have subscribed to the channel and those who stumble upon the channel. Uh, so I want to try to do more videos. So even though I don't have all the heavy equipment here, I, I realize what's most important is my knowledge and my expertise in what I've been able to do for the last 13 years 
developing a successful interview podcast. And I just want to be able to be present and to offer more value to you all. So I'm going to be going, I'm going to be doing more videos to share insight to you. I know this video was kind of long, but I felt like I really needed to outline some of the things that was important for you guys to know. All right. Thank you all again. Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next video. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed yet. Thank you and see y'all later.